and determine a reasonable rent amount with the, with the landlord. Participants are very low income persons with adjusted gross income that does not exceed 50% of the area median income set by HUD annually. And in this case, for example, a single person household would not earn any more than 26,500 per year. Participants contribute 30% of whatever their income is toward rent and home funds make up the difference with payments going directly to the landlord. The Housing Authority is participating in a collaborative pilot project with other providers and constituents within the city of Santa Barbara in an effort to bring about the much needed housing first model to the South Coast. The additional $50,000 requested today will provide rental assistance for up to two more years to an additional five TBRA participants, those experiencing chronic homelessness with a need for intensive wraparound services. The actual number of assisted persons will depend upon the individual's income, the rent amount, and the term of the assistance. Although home TBRA grant funds may not be utilized for case management, these services are provided to TBRA clients by the Housing Authority through their Supportive Services Program. The Housing Authority recognizes the important connection between case management services and successful, sustainable housing placements. In regard to the requested expansion of the geographic area, we all recognize that Santa Barbara has one of the most expensive housing markets in the country. The median rent for studios is approximately $1,160 per month, and a one-bedroom apartment is currently renting for $1,500 a month. High rents exacerbate efforts to move homeless people back into housing and to retain housing for residents who are at risk of becoming homeless. Expanding the geographic area for this project will allow housing units to be located throughout the south coast area of Santa Barbara County, and that's from Gaviota to the Ventura County line. This would facilitate participants leasing more affordable units and sustaining their housing after assistance has ended. There are sufficient existing appropriations in the home fund to cover the proposed grant increase. In accordance with HUD regulations, the city must commit $47,930 before the end of the city's fiscal year <coughs> by June 30th. <coughs> Committing the funds requested here will satisfy this commitment deadline and address critical housing needs. So we ask that you consider and recommend that council approve allocating $50,000 in home funds to increase the 2012 TBRA grant agreement between the city and the housing authority, expanding the, expanding the geographic area covered by the agreement, extending the agreement term two years to expire in 2017, and authorize the community development director to execute documents subject to approval by the city attorney office. This concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions, and we do have Rob Pearson from the Housing Authority here, who is our expert witness. <laughs> Thank you. You have questions? Well, just to clarify, these are the federal grant funds that we are just giving authority to um, increase the amount by $50,000. That's the only difference than the previous decision about this program. Okay. So geographic the geographic area. area is different this time, too. And I understand why. They are expanding why. the geographic area okay. and extending the term two more years. And the geographic area, obviously, is because rental options are more plentiful and more affordable um, in the That's overall area as opposed to necessarily just the city of Santa Barbara. Okay. I'd appreciate hearing just a, a tiny bit more about the home fund uh, program. Uh, what, how does that work? Uh, well, it, the right. Home Investment Partnership Program is a HUD-established funding source. Typically, it's used f to fund affordable housing. This is a newer program that recognizes the need for more affordable rentals. We receive an entitlement annually 
similar to the CDBG program, and we're under strict regulations as to how to use those funds, and they give strict guidelines and timelines for use of the funds. And so how much is the, um, and does the city apply for it, or is it the housing authority that applies for it? It's the city that applies for it. We apply for those funds through our annual action plan, along with our CDBG funding. The home funds have been cut in the last three years by almost 50%. Last year, I believe our allocation was around 475000 something like that. And so it's once upon a time it was a million. Once upon a time it was yes, well over a million. Okay. Do all, do the other cities? Does the city of Carton Maria do that? And the city of Goleta do that? And does the county do that? The county, through their um, consortium, receives a home entitlement that they then farm out to various other cities. Okay, they receive so they don't the run. They don't home. run a program. As the housing now is it the city that then runs the program or does it does it get subbed out to the housing authority? We sub it out to the housing authority. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, Rob Pearson speaking for the housing authority. Um, the city of Santa Barbara is an entitlement uh, jurisdiction for home funding. Uh, I don't I don't believe Carpinteria or Galita are, but I think they participate through a consortium. If you get enough jurisdictions, small jurisdictions together, you can apply and they do that through the county. But the home funding was established by the Congress to provide additional uh, federal funding for rental housing specifically that is affordable to low income persons. In the older days when we got a million dollars, we would apply to the city for some of our new construction projects to help us cover the cost, the development cost. But as the money's gotten smaller and smaller, $400,000 may get you a unit and a half in today's market to build from the ground up. So one of the eligible uses is to create a look-alike Section 8 program. And since we're expending all of our Section 8 funds, this is a good way of providing rental housing, even though it's a subsidy that gets paid to a private landlord on behalf of our client, but it's an eligible use. So uh, in working with city staff, we said there's this unmet need. How can we get, because we have our waiting list for Section 8, how can we get rental assistance subsidies to uh, homeless people in particular so we're able to use home funds to carve out a specific program, whereas in Section 8, we're kind of obligated to serve everybody who's eligible, we cannot just focus on homeless. So I this see. is a good way of dealing with that population and meeting their housing needs, not making them wait for years on our Section 8 waiting list, but to try to deal with homelessness head on through a specific program. Okay. So just to finish this, so this is really um, the way to implement a housing first strategy at a, at a very small level, but the, a significant targeted population exactly. approach. Okay. I mean, the, the numbers I see that, you know, a homeless person on the street can easily cost your local government thirty to $60,000 a year, depending on how many trips to the emergency room and the like, whereas if you can get them housed in a program like this, you're probably spending about $10,000 a year, with rep, assuming you get the wraparound services, which we're connecting with other service providers like Pathpoint and Alcohol and Drug and Mental Health Services to make sure once we cover the housing piece that they're at the table too to deliver wraparound services even though they may be in a private unit with a private landlord. Thank you. Okay, so uh, any other comments from staff then at this point? Then uh, we have uh, staff recommendation. staff recommendation. Okay, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great, okay, well thank you. Thanks for the program, and uh, this meeting's adjourned.